Hi, and welcome to Hypnotize Me, the podcast about hypnosis, transformation, and healing. This is Dr. Elizabeth Bonet, and I'm your host. This podcast is not a substitute for mental health treatment, nor should it be. If you need therapy or hypnotherapy, please seek a trained professional. I do hypnosis all over the world, so if you'd like to learn more about me, you can do that at my website, drlizhypnosis.com. That's D-R-L-I-Z hypnosis.com. Now on to our episode. Hi, everyone. Dr. Liz here, and I'm happy to be recording this week's episode. It is a part two of last week's episode, but last week's, which is HM76, didn't air properly. There was some error on my um, the company that shoots the podcast out to iTunes and all kinds of places. So it went some places, but not others. Um, so hopefully that will be fixed today or tomorrow. I'm recording this uh, Wednesday, the 25th of April. And you may get that episode and then this one right after each other. But this is a follow up to that episode. Anyway, the places where it did go, some people did listen to it. And I've already gotten some questions about inner child hypnosis, like follow up questions of people wanting to know a little bit more about it. So I thought I would take this opportunity to talk a little bit more in depth about it. I gave you the overview in the last episode. And one of the questions that came up was that people were curious about this talking piece. So just briefly, when you go into a hypnotherapist's office and it's a present focused hypnosis, you're often not talking during it. You're lying there and you're just receiving the suggestions and the relaxation and you're in the hypnotic state and they're talking about healing or energy or something like this, but you're not answering questions during it. And when we do inner child hypnosis, in particularly this one technique called core healing, then you are talking during it. So let me differentiate between these two. Inner child hypnosis can also be where you're just receiving. And what that looks like is that we talk you and the hypnotherapist, or let's say me in this instance, because I'm going to talk about my own experience here, how I do it. We talk, I get a sense of what problem you're looking at, what problem you want to go back and look at, what you want to heal, what is it about this incident or this time period in your life that really needs some work. And often I'll craft then a hypnosis that helps you heal this part. Now, when we get into core healing, which goes even deeper than that, I believe, then we're talking about a process where I ask you what happened during the hypnosis and you're talking during it. So we do this first part, which is relaxation and getting you into the hypnotic state, getting you into the brainwave state of hypnosis, which we know is not the same as a waking state then I'm asking you questions about what happened and I continue to ask you questions. So it's not just one question. You tell me the incident and we're done. It's I'm asking all kinds of questions about what happened, what you may have needed at the time that you didn't get, what would be different about how you moved forward in life if you did get what you needed and also questions about who you're dealing with. I'm not just um, shooting in the dark here. I'm actually asking, or who did you need those things from? Is it your mother? Is it your father? Is it a teacher? Is it this particular person? What if they had treated you differently? How would you be different? So we're doing more in-depth questions. And of course, those are particular to each person. They're very individual. How we explore that is individual. The difference here is that you're answering those and you're answering them in a hypnotic state. So your answer may surprise you. This is what I actually often find with clients is that their answers sometimes surprise them because they're different than when they're in the conscious state. If they were the same, you probably wouldn't be doing hypnosis. (laughs) It's how you think about it, right? Like you would know the answers, but it's, often a surprising process to be like, oh, wait a minute. 
you know, consciously, I would tell you this, but in the hypnotic state, I'm telling you this. Now, you're not out during the hypnotic state when we're doing core healing hypnosis. You're actually very much aware your thinking brain is still going and we honor and integrate that part into the hypnosis because the thinking brain does help you integrate. But the experience that I hear from people and I had this myself was my thinking brain said, oh, whoa, wait a minute. That really is the answer over there. And my subconscious brain, you know, said something very different than what my thinking brain would have. I just find this a fascinating process when it happens and when I do it, it is absolutely a gift is how I feel about it. A gift from the client and from myself. Like we enter into the state together to do the core healing and the inner child hypnosis. And what happens is that since we're working on deeper issues, then this is like an inside out process these deeper issues tend to get solved. It's also a process that you learn that you can use the rest of your life. So I'm just the guide there, but my real goal is, hey, let's teach you a process where you can go into your own self-hypnotic state and answer these questions for yourself. Sometimes it's safer when you have a guide there, that would be me. And if you have that sense that, no, I need the safety, you need to listen to that and make sure that someone is there with you that can provide the safety, someone who's trained in how to do this. But if you're at a state of like, oh, okay, you know, I have this curiosity going on in my life and I really would like to go into this self-hypnosis state and see if I can find an answer, then you have a process about how to do that after you've done the core healing. And once you do that, then you often do feel clear-minded, more centered, peaceful, calm, and this spills over into other areas of your life. So it's not just this one area that you decided to look at. What I hear reported back is that other areas begin to improve too. And that friends and family notice this. So I had someone say to me that her mother almost immediately noticed a difference. I've had people say friends notice a difference that extended family will notice a difference even, and that they feel different moving through the world. And again, this is a part of hypnosis that I feel like is almost operates on that spiritual realm. I am going to say that here. I know I don't talk a whole lot about spirituality on this podcast, but it is sort of this magic that happens. And some people call that spirituality and some people call that magical. And some people would like brainwave research on it. Okay. (laughs) I'm sort of a combination of all those people. I would love brainwave research on this process. Unfortunately, I don't have it. But my point there is that they feel like they're moving through life differently, that they value themselves more, that they feel more centered and forgiving and spiritually connected, even if they have that sense, you know, Uh, This doesn't mean that an atheist can't come in and get real benefit from this process. They absolutely can. I was actually atheist for about 20 years before I felt like a sense of spirituality returned to my life. So very familiar with that. But if there is a sense of spirituality in, in people, then they often report back that that seems enhanced, that they feel more connected to both other people into their higher power. But really the biggest goal of the core healing hypnosis is that your pain point feels like it's healed or healing. So it's a sense of this is getting a lot better, that this is not as much of an issue in my life, that this doesn't take me over and control me, that this obsession goes away, that these effects are going to continue to get better and better. It's compounded. So it's not just during this time period, but I found and my mentor has found and other people who've done this technique have found that the effects of the core healing hypnosis compounds over time. So you continue to feel more like yourself, more worthy and valuable in the world, more like your life has meaning as you move through it, and less and less triggered 
by your old thoughts and habits and feelings, traumas, and that these core issues that perhaps you've had and held on to for a long time are now really going away. I talked about this some in the previous episode of, let's say, a smoker who the, you know, straight behavioral stuff and the just the receptive hypnosis didn't work. So then we go do the core healing hypnosis and there's no longer a sense of this need to smoke, this need to be that person just gently drifts away or floats away or just isn't there often. Um, Another example of that is recurrent depression. I've said before in the podcast that I myself have had recurrent depression. And after I went through this process, because I had to do that to be trained in it, I no longer felt like depression would be back or was just around the corner. I worked with someone else who said the same thing, that his depression always felt like it was around the corner, like, oh, here I am, you know, I'm doing pretty well, but I know it could come back at any time. And after doing several core healing sessions, he felt like that was lifted, that it wasn't just around the corner. He felt a really good about himself, about his life. The depression was gone and he didn't feel like it's right there over his shoulder anymore. And that if it did come back, then he would have a better tool to address it really early instead of waiting until it got worse and worse. You know, that's a harder process when it gets more entrenched and and worse. And I know that myself, the therapist that I worked with for uh, eight years, I saw her part of that process was me learning early warning signs of depression And when I saw them to move into action, to protect myself from it getting worse, really to like nip it in the bud early on, I see that as a prep piece. I learned this years ago. And then more recently when a crisis happened and I saw some early signs, I was like, oh, I need to go into action. I need to do this. And then I also got trained in this core healing hypnosis and did it for myself And the effect was really incredible. It lifted me right out of depression. For me, I caught that early, but I have worked with people where the depression was deeper. It's like, all right, let's do this cognitive piece. Let's do this talking piece. Let's learn tools that you can use. And let's do this deeper process as well of really going in and saying, okay, why does this keep happening? Let's see what the subconscious says. Let's see what those early experiences are that somehow set you up for this and let's heal them. Let's put some good stuff in there and let's heal. So that was another one of the questions I got was about this healing aspect of it. And people were really curious about what I'm saying during that healing process. And I'll tell you again, it's individual. And during the assessment phase, during the talking part, I'm getting to know you as a client and I'm getting to know what is it you do actually want? How do you want to feel? What are the good things that you want to do in your life that perhaps you're being held back from? When I'm doing the healing phase of core hypnosis, then I'm putting in all the good things that that particular person wants. doesn't matter what I think someone should have in their life, right? It really matters what you want in your life. So that's what I put in. All right. I hope that answered a couple more questions about the core healing hypnosis and the inner child hypnosis. I do consider it a subset of inner child hypnosis and keep the questions coming. I really love them. I may do a whole nother episode on this even When I initially heard about this technique, it was actually for people who kept attracting partners that weren't good for them. That was my first exposure to this technique. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm signing up for that workshop. Sounds like a great one. So many people struggle with that. And I've struggled with that in my own life. So let me sign up for that. And it's really, really effective for that. I may do that whole episode next week. 
And if you want to hear that, let me know. Drop me an email. Just a quick one. Now, the other question I get is whether I'll do this on the telephone. I will do the first type of inner child hypnosis on the telephone where we talk a bit and I get to know you and then I craft a hypnosis to heal a particular time in your life, but you're just listening. You're not talking during that hypnosis. For the core healing hypnosis, I'll only do that at this point in time in person. That may change in the future, but right now I'm most comfortable doing that in person because some pretty intense stuff can come up for you. And I want to make sure I'm available for that person to support them through that if that should happen. So people will often fly in for this or drive in from other parts of the state. They'll rent a hotel room or an Airbnb or stay with a friend and schedule several days with me. And we do it that way. So it's intensive sessions over a couple of days. And I do do that on the weekends. I won't do it on a weekend I have my kids, but I will schedule it for a weekend where I don't have them. And if you want to know more about it, it's at my website. It'll be drlizhypnosis.com, D-R-L-I-Z hypnosis.com slash episode 77. You can find more information about it there. All right, people. I hope you have a wonderful week. Peace. I hope you truly enjoyed today's episode. Remember that you can get free hypnosis downloads over at my website, drlizhypnosis.com, D-R-L-I-Z hypnosis.com. I work all over the world doing hypnosis. So if you're interested in working with me, please schedule a free consultation over at my website and we'll see what your goals are and if I can be of service to you in helping you reach them. Finally, if you liked today's episode, please subscribe to the podcast or tell a friend. That way more and more people learn about the power of hypnosis.